Everybody, it's Tyler here. Week one at Calvin State University, checking in team number 3357 Comets. And I'm here with Alex, Aiden, Ben, and Brian. And Comets here have been looking fantastic. We're filming this right before elimination matches here, the number one seed. And this robot, just an all-in-one complete package going from intake. Uh, of course, in their shooter, their climber has been spot on. So we can't wait to dive into what's been making this team so successful here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So Alex, we're actually going to start out on your uh, drive here and show off uh, kind of your drive rails and what's gone into it. So what's unique about your drive this year? So the best thing about our drive rail is that the drive rails are completely replaceable. They're one package. It's four bolts to get the thing off, and we try to unplug wires. It's super fast to change them out. So why was that important to you this year when you're looking at, like, kind of, hey, you know, things are important to our robot. What made this be kind of higher end for your bot to uh, focus on? Basically, we've had problems with uh, chains on our drive base detensioning, or we'll get them folded and then they break. So being able to quickly just drop it and put a new one in and then diagnose the problem later has made our uh, getting our robot back on the field a lot faster. Let's keep moving on. We're going to go into your intake next. I think Ben's going to be covering that. So talk to me about uh, on your intake here. Uh, what kind of iterations did you go through throughout the season? Uh, was this kind of your first choice you want to go with? And of course, talk to me about some of the mechanisms in it. Yeah, so we actually designed our intake from the get go with the ideas of robustness and touch it on it. So originally, we actually had an intake that was more just kind of like fixed rollers, actuation, what we usually do, just a pivot. But after a while, we actually went into a four bar linkage. Uh, Brian, can you run the intake, please? Just drop it down. Cool, bring it back up. So it's a non-parallel four bar linkage, which means it starts at a different angle than it ends at. And we're using polycarbonate with uh, aluminum reinforcement. These orange plates are aluminum, which means that it's very robust. We can replace almost any part in this intake within a few minutes. It's worked fantastic. We can big, uh, get balls amazingly. It's great. Have you used this type of intake in previous seasons at all? Uh, no, this is a first iteration, or not a first iteration, but a first, uh, a first for our team, this kind of four bar linkage. Although we have used three roller designs in the past, such as last year. Uh, with 2021. So as we go up next, we're going to talk about your uh, indexer. That's going to be Aiden. Uh, so Aiden, talk to you about uh, maybe any sensors that have gone in. How did you figure out like your angle of the curve of getting the, the balls in, that sort of thing? Yeah, so this design is kind of based off of 2020, uh, where we weren't so good at getting the balls with it. Uh, so it's kind of a new iteration of it. And how it simply works is over on this side right here, we have these belts driven by a Neo 550. And then also on a Neo 550 down here, we have this wheel that spins and sucks it up. And then it, it simply just comes up here. It'll get stopped by these beam brake sensors. And then uh, the second ball will come in, it'll also get stopped. And when we're ready, it will shoot out the shooter. And then, uh, so one thing how we do this is we have a new Avid this year. Uh, Avid CNC router and so we were a lot able to do a, uh, quick prototypes out of wood we were able to smoke that out of that so it's really quick and we were able to get good iterations of it. Well let's hop back we'll talk about your shooter and a little bit more what's gone into that. obviously adjustable hood uh, that's on it so uh, just talk to me about the general design and concept of it. Yep so our shooter is actually very similar to our last year's shooter although this year we went with a fixed uh, shooter design there's no turret so it's just rigid but what that means is that we had a lot of time for R&D and testing. We didn't have to spend time on coding or programming our uh, turret. So it's very simple. All it is, like last year, is just two plates with one wheel in the middle. We actually only used one Neo. Originally we had two. We can see the spot over here. But we found we actually only needed one. So this keeps weight down up here. And then, Brian, can you run the shooter hood? I'm going to try to bring it out there. Yep. That's good. This shooter hood is very similar to last year. Uh, we had a few different designs, and this is kind of what we ended on. It's really reliable. It just uses a Neo 550 down here and an absolute encoder. And we can just run this and it goes in and out. It's very rigid. We run on bearings with these contact plates here. 
It's extremely reliable, we've had no problems with it, and it's great for getting that angle adjustment like we had before. How have you, uh, when you approach Rapid React, how did you uh, try to control like spin on your cargo? Exactly, yep. So originally we actually had no foam on this polycarbonate. This is the foam here. Uh, what that happened there is that we'd be very inconsistent because balls would slip and we wouldn't have consistent backspin. But now with this foam, we have almost uh, pretty much the same backspin each, uh, each shot, so we can predict how much backspin we have. Backspin isn't great for this game, but with that predictability, we can program to account for that. So we're hitting pretty reliable shots with not that many bounce outs. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, of course, contributing to your number one seat as well. Uh, also on that is going to be your climbing mechanism that's been just absolutely lights out. Uh, so talk to me about when you, you know, looking at climbing, how did you approach uh, the method or direction that you wanted to go from the climb? Yeah, so one of the early things we did in the season was we made one of these guys, which is basically a 1 12th scale, as you can see written right there. Uh, and then, so we made designs out of cardboard and kind of fidgeted around with it. And then we moved up to a 1 4th scale, and that we brought it a little bigger. And that kind of gave us the direction to go. And then also, we also decided on it based on what, what's going to fit our robot. And so this is what we came to. Uh, basically how it works is we have a cascading elevator here where if you want to bring the elevator up, so that, that will come up and then it'll pull down on the first bar or the second bar and then we'll have these guys which is driven by this cross shaft here. These will come out and push us and push our whole robot on an angle and then this guy will be on a angle and we'll pull that back and pull it to the next bar and then we do that for the last bar also. What's your uh, timing in regards to getting up on traversal climb and is that the optimal amount of time you're looking for or are you looking uh, to speed it up more? So our fastest climb we can get is a 15 second but we have added a basically a thing in programming that checks it so it takes a little longer but it uh, it checks the position and make sure make sure we're on the bar like we want it. So it, it does take around 20 seconds now, but it also keeps us from falling. Well, let's wrap up uh, talking about your driver station, Autonomous, what's gone into that. Uh, talk to me a little bit more, what's, uh, what's gone into it. We'll take a look at your driver station as well too, Brian. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start out with the driver station, I guess. Uh, first of all, we've this looks actually pretty similar to our uh, driver station we've been using for a while now, but this year uh, we basically upgraded it and uh, kind of made it thicker at the bottom here so that we can run our cables underneath. We haven't completely finished the upgrades yet, of course, but uh, and then we also have these mounts here, which are 3D printed, and then we can screw these monopods, which extend. We can screw these monopods in here, and then we have two heads-up displays for our drivers. And on these displays, then, we are also going to have our two custom dashboards. So we'll have one dashboard for primary driver and one dashboard for secondary driver because we want our drivers to get different information. So for example, the secondary driver who's controlling climb, secondary driver might want to know the climb amperage so that we can make sure we're not uh, going to fail our climb because of some kind of issue, like we're not aligned properly. Um, whilst primary driver obviously is not doing anything with climb, but primary driver might have some other, uh, a different camera feed than the secondary driver. So the secondary driver might have the limelight feed, while the primary driver has an intake facing forward feed. So yeah, we've really done a, a, a nice upgrade on this this year. Hey, talk to me, uh, autonomous wise, looks like you're doing a little bit of uh, tracking on the field for autos. Just talk to me about what you've done this year. Yeah, so just this off season is when we started doing some research into how to improve our autons. So we're using spline-based autons here. This is the Pathweaver tool. Um, generally, we've stayed relatively uh, close to vanilla WPI lib um, guidance in terms of uh, the spline software. But yeah, so we have uh, a couple different uh, routines here. And what it does is it allows us to graphically draw the path that we'd like our robot to take. And then in our code, we can also program in uh, a series of steps to uh, create a routine. And, the, and then our drive base will read those steps sequentially while we're on the field. So it will be told the name of a path that we've programmed through Pathweaver, and then perhaps the next step will be like turn in place 180 degrees or break for two seconds so you can fire, and then once you're done firing, then continue the path. So we've really done a nice upgrade on our Autons as well this year. Well, Comments3357, thanks a lot for taking time. Tell us about your robot. Uh, of course, number one seed as we go into elimination round, so we wish you best of luck uh, here. Uh, and, of course, moving on, hopefully, into uh, FIM States and, who knows, even Worlds as well, too. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. 
First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.